Hey everyone, it's Alex. Today is Tuesday, January 10th. Um, I am here in my home studio and I wanted to do a little bit of a studio update for January. Um, for anyone who has been following me, if you know my art and stuff, I have a lot of different things going on here. Um, and I like the idea of putting on YouTube around the beginning of every month a studio update with kind of what I've finished in the last month, changes that are happening, and what I'm going to be working on in the month ahead. So this is kind of what I'm going to be doing for January, especially the next week because I start classes on January 17th. So I have a week left of doing sort of a full-time schedule of trying to get my art business in order and wrapping up um, some personal projects that I want to get done before I start classes again. So a little bit about me and my practice in case this is your first time coming across one of my videos. I'm really new to YouTube so um, still kind of trying to figure it out but um, I am Alex. I am a printmaker living in San Antonio, Texas and I also enjoy working in a lot of craft mediums like sewing and knitting. Um, I'm hoping to do these studio updates to show what I'm working on and what is going on with my business. Um, I sell prints mostly as a business and do a lot of sewing and knitting um, for like personal projects for myself. So in this video, I'm going to first talk about what is going on with my business right now. Um, I'm set up on Etsy, so I'm going to walk you through why I'm on Etsy and then a lot of the stuff that I have on there for sale basically if you're interested in kind of what I sell and what I make and then I'm going to move on to personal projects that I'm planning to work on soon and show you a quilt that I'm working on, a few mending projects that I want to do and one other project that I plan on working on in the next few weeks. So if that is something that you're interested in sit back and relax but um, I'm really happy that you're here so enjoy bye so for my business this is kind of the update i am back on etsy i've been going back and forth the last like year between having my stuff on etsy on my own website and on both having some things on etsy and some things on my website and i'm having issues with my website right now particularly particularly with my domain name, Alex Hayes Chapel. I'm trying to get it transferred to a different, um, like a different host um, to save myself some money and it has been a pain. So on my Etsy, I have all of my smaller stuff on there loaded. I have pictures, it's available right now. You can go check it out. Um, go to alexhayeschapel.etsy.com. Hi, it is. I'm gonna spend some time this week definitely getting my larger prints on Etsy because I have all of the shipping supplies, um, they're ready. I even have photographs of most of them. Um, I just need to spend the time to get those listings together. Um, it takes quite a bit of time to make sure that you have all of your descriptions and tags and everything in there. So that's definitely a big goal for this week is to get all of my larger work on Etsy and then like post about it probably on my Instagram let people know that I still sell work. <laughs> I'm just a mess. Let me show you guys a little bit of what is on my Etsy right now and why and um, a few of the things that I plan on putting up there soon. So let me grab a few things. So in this box I pretty much have everything that I already have on Etsy all labeled and not labeled but like up on Etsy ready for sale is in this box um, so some of my main things sorry this is gonna make a bit of noise these prints these are kind of my staple prints right now they are uh, multicolored screen prints um, they're five by five I sell these for $18 plus shipping um, I did editions of 24 of each of these and I probably have like 15 to 20 left um, of both of those and it's a perfect thing for Etsy because it's so small and easy to ship um, so those are good I just don't think people really know that like 
I'm selling work on Etsy. I don't know. I don't have a huge like following on Instagram or anything like that, but I feel like those are a really good price and they came out really nice. Um, so definitely want to be selling those. Um, and then I have these other kind of mini prints. Six and Magnolia and a sunflower. These two are five by seven. So really easy to frame. This is just a single color block print that I did with like the, the pink stuff um, that you carve. Um, they're not a limited edition, so I could print more of these. I sell them for $12 with shipping. I have a lot of those on there. Um, and I could fairly easily print more if they were to like sell out. I also have um, several mini notebooks on there. So for a while, I was making these small notebooks. They're, um, I took a book and paper art class and learned how to make these and just like became obsessed with the process um, and got all the supplies and kind of perfected my like formula for making these. Um, I brought them to a lot of like in-person markets and I had a lot that were like really tiny, like just like probably two inches by two inches. And those all sold out. So a lot of these are more of a mid size. This is like three by four ish. Um, so kind of the ones that I have left over on my Etsy and I put a sale on them. I think I put like 30% off of what I was originally hoping to sell them for um, because I don't plan on making these anymore. I'd rather focus just on prints. Um, so I'd rather kind of just move these, but also like I'm not gonna use them all. And I think someone would really enjoy them. So that's why I have them up there. I also have these little composition notebooks, same thing. I put like a sale on them um, cause I don't plan on making these anymore, but I love them. So I had to keep them up there. For a while I had taken them down cause I just wasn't sure. I wanted everything to like fit my brand, but there's also a balance between wanting to have a cohesive brand and not like wasting really good art that you've already made um, when there's probably still someone out there willing to buy it. So I want to leave these up for a little while. I'll probably take them down at some point if they don't sell, um, especially if I do like another, if I make more work and do a shop update with new prints that I really like that I feel really go together as a set then I'll probably take down some of this like older stuff it's another really interesting notebook that I made this one is case bound so it has like a it's like a hardback book bound hmm. they're really interesting I think that um the price on these was a little bit high for the in-person markets I think people hold something this small um, and I was really hoping to sell these for around like $30. Um, and something this small doesn't feel like it should be $30, but they do take me a very long time to make. So I couldn't sell them for less than that. Let's move on to some personal projects that I'm hoping to kind of get wrapped up or some progress that I want to make on some personal projects before I start class on the 17th. So we have one week. This is what I'm thinking. For knitting, if you know me, you know I'm obsessed with knitting. I am gonna try to not do too much knitting. <laughs> Just whenever I'm like relaxing in the evening, I don't have any kind of pressing like gifts or anything that I need to knit. So we're not even gonna talk about knitting, except that we just talked about knitting, but um, no knitting goals for right now. If you are interested in knitting, if you're a knitter, I have started a knitting podcast here on YouTube, like a visual podcast video podcast um and the first episode i put up um just before this video so definitely go check that out if you're interested in what i'm working on right now what i do have some goals related to in terms of personal making is for my sewing so the biggest thing is i have a quilt that is in progress and i want to get a little bit farther on it so it's a little bit easier for me to work on during the semester let me show you. This is the Scrappy Lines quilt. It is a pattern that I got from Etsy. I will link the pattern um, in case you're a quilter and you're interested. 
I am loving how this is coming out. This is a quarter of it. Okay, so this is not a baby blanket. This is a massive throw for my couch. This is a quarter of it. Let me grab another quarter, another quarter of it. Um, so if you're a quilter, you can probably tell that I have been making these strips and then um, sewing them together. I have the rest of the strips made to make the two other quarters but I need to make the sheets like this and put them all together to complete the quilt top. So I think that this is um, maybe a few hours. I think if I spent two or three hours working on this, I could get the quilt top completed. And my goal for this week is to complete the quilt top and get it basted onto the batting and the backing. Okay, so I also need to piece together the backing or buy muslin for the backing. I'm not sure, I'll have to see what I have in my stash. I might have enough to piece together a backing, but I want it to be, I want it to look really nice on the back too, because this is going to stay on my couch in my living room a lot of my quilts, like I'll hang on the wall and I don't really care what the back looks like, um, but I want it to be soft and like last a long time and that kind of thing. So I wanna make the backing nice. Um, so I'll see what I have. It might be easiest and the best looking to buy extra wide muslin for the back, but I'm kind of one of those people that really doesn't like to buy materials unless apps is absolutely necessary. So I will check my stash and probably also consult my partner to see if they would prefer a really plain solid back or a more patchwork back. We'll see. We'll see what happens with that. But my goal is to finish the quilt top, get it basted, get the back done. Um, that way, um, if you're not familiar with quilting, um, what I want to do is finish the whole top. This is not the whole quilt because the back, it has all the seams and everything. So what you do is attach this loosely to sort of a fluffy layer and then another piece of fabric. And then you sew those together um, to kind of fuse it. And that's why you have those like quilted lines over. I personally like to hand like hand quilt instead of putting the whole blanket through my sewing machine. So I'm planning on hand quilting it, which I know is just gonna take me a really long time, but I'm gonna get it basted and fuse, like kind of tied loosely together and pinned together so that I can spend time over the next few months hand quilting. I'm probably going to like do um, like a little hand quilted line around each of these squares there are a hundred of them. Um, so, I mean, I might try to do two a day or something for a while and then it would be done. Um, but, so this isn't necessarily something that I'm gonna finish soon, but finishing the quilt top would be amazing and getting it basted is my, my big goal. So, it's the same day. It hasn't been that long since I recorded and I am working on this. I'm actually not quite as far as I thought I was. I still need to make one of the, um, like, the strips for my last panel but I finished the third quarter of it. I just have more than I thought I had to do for the fourth, but I'm working on it right now. I'm gonna make some progress on this today and hopefully um, maybe I'll have some pictures or a little bit more footage of some more of this. I wanted to let you guys know because I totally forgot to mention that this quilt is made completely with like upcycled and thrifted and like leftover fabric from other projects. So you may notice that the like creamy background color behind like the squares, it doesn't match. And I am totally fine with that. That was kind of the original intention. I knew that all those creamy colors that I had wouldn't match, but I just kind of mixed and matched and I don't mind the way it looks. Um, but that's why it's because I got them from different places and all of these are like so leftover from masks that I made. I think this is from like a pair of pants and this is from a shirt. Um, it's a lot of different like clothing and then like quilting cotton um, from like other projects. My other um, kind of sewing related project that I wanna work on is a few things that I need to mend. Mending is something that I've gotten 
like really into the past few years. I think the kind of it's the perfect meeting point between like sustainability and sewing and crafting. Um, so whenever I have a garment or a bag or something that gets a hole or a weak spot or needs to be changed, I throw it into this basket in my studio. And then whenever I have time um, to kind of focus on it, I will work on mending those pieces. Let me show you a few of the things I need to do. Like this bag, this is like a big heavy canvas farmer's market bag. I'm kind of rough on these because I do like wash them a lot um, because I use them a lot and it just has this little hole popping through right here and I don't want it to get any bigger. So we are going to probably just patch it, reinforce it. Um, I have these really nice pants, which I found at a um, vintage store. And the first time I wore them, the button just like popped right off. <laughs> um, so I think it just wasn't attached very securely. And all I need to do on these is reattach um, a button. Um, this is a dress that I made. Let me zip it so I can show you a bit better. I might be able to put in a photo of me wearing it. Um, so you can see, but this is a dress that I made. And every time I wear it, I hurt it. <laughs> it's not particularly well made. I'm really not a big like garment sewer, but I wanted to make this for a special occasion. And then I've worn it twice and both times I've put holes in it <laughs> and needed to mend it. And um, so the it has a slit at the bottom and the slit just like kept crawling up. So I need to reinforce this as well as some areas on the hem. I did like a tape hem um, with like an iron on tape um, and it's just coming out. Um, I think I'm going to try to hand sew some of that down. This is a little tote bag that I made um, at the beginning of the pandemic. I was using this as a purse for like two years and it is falling apart. Look at the handle. Like, look at the bottom. It's falling apart. So I'm gonna patch it. <laughs> I think I just need to replace it at this point. All of the like, these connection points were broken and I put safety pins on them. Um. I mean, it's still cute, but I think I need to replace it with a new one that I can actually use as like a purse again. It'll be cute all patched up, but like, it'll be a lot. <laughs> um, we've got this top, which I also got at a vintage store. It fits me well, but I want to shorten it a little bit. It's a weird length. It like comes below my hips and is pretty fitted. So then down where like my hips get a bit wider, it's like tight all of a sudden. Um, and it just looks awkward and I'm gonna wear this with like higher waisted stuff anyway so I'm gonna shorten it a little bit so it's not quite cropped but like more hip length um, and I think that that will be more functional for me to wear. Lastly I just have some socks that I want to like darn. See that one's just completely threadbare like all the colored um, little koala socks has come off of like the bottom toe. This one that actually has a hole in the hole. Um, some little running socks with holes in the toe. Um, so these are my partner's socks. Once they get holes and get darned, they don't want to wear them anymore. So then they become my socks. So I get new socks. <laughs> um, yeah, that is my mending pile. Um, so I'm not necessarily hoping to get through all of these things, but I want to make a dent, especially in the things that I would use for school and stuff like those jeans. Um, that'll be an easy one too. And fixing that bag and probably the socks. I think those will be kind of really my goal that I want to get done before I start school again. Let me put this away so I can tell you about one more thing. Last personal project that I'm hoping to work on before I go back to school in a week is my flower a day sketchbook that I started a very long time ago. That is this. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this. Um, several months ago, I was posting about this all the time. What I did, um, I was inspired by um, Scott Christian Sava. He does a lot of like, he'll get a sketchbook with 30 pages and work on it like each day for 30 days and do like a theme. So I did each of these as a flower um, and I used ink and gouache and graphite, um, picked a flower 
and I made a color palette in gouache um, and did a sketch of it and did like a little bit of writing about each one. Um, just trying to get a few more. I really enjoyed doing these gouache color palettes because as a printmaker, I think about simplifying color down to a few colors really often. Um, and like mixing colors in gouache to get just the right color is really satisfying to me. A few of these I've already made into prints. The first one, the magnolia, and then this one, the coneflower, I've already um, made into screen prints. And I'm hoping to make more of these into screen prints or relief prints. Um, but the problem is, as you go a little farther, you will see that it is not done. Um, this is where I stopped. I need to finish this one. I have more too that I've kind of started um, and have not finished. Um, so I probably won't finish this this week or anything. I think I probably have 10 more to do. Um, but I want to make some more progress on it and maybe make a plan to actually work on this again because this was a really cool project yeah that's pretty much it for my plans for this week and kind of the rest of january too once i start school on the 17th i want to give myself some grace to kind of get into the semester and get settled and figure out what my schedule is really going to be like it's hard to tell how much work everything's gonna be before you see the syllabus, meet your instructor and all of that. So I might not be doing a ton um, once I actually start classes on the 17th, but I do have some big ambitious plans for before that. And I'm hoping to either at the end of January or the beginning of February, make another studio update video. Um, I'm hoping to do this monthly to really keep people caught up with what's going on um, with my art. Um, you know, posting on Instagram, even if you're posting really regularly, I just don't think that you can get a full picture of someone's work on there. So I'm trying this out to see, you know, maybe making a video and just sitting down and talking about it will be a better look into my world and my studio. So I really, really, really appreciate you watching this video. Um, it's been really cool just sitting and chatting with you. I feel motivated to really work on this stuff. I wrote it down, talked about it. I told however many people watch this video and I am going to do that. It's still morning right now. So I have the whole day to work on these projects and I'm feeling really good about it. So I hope that you're getting some art done too. Um, I love that people can like watch YouTube videos and kind of work on your own thing if you're knitting or sketching, working on homework. Um, yeah, uh, thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe. If you want to leave a comment, definitely ask me a question. I feel like I have presented so many, <laughs> so many different things, printmaking, sewing, knitting, like I just kind of throw all of these things at you. And if you have any questions about any of these processes or where to find more information, definitely um, leave me a question in the comments or let me know what you're working on. Um, yeah, thanks so much for watching. You guys have a great beginning of 2023. Bye!